Now I'm going to use these uh, 3.5 inch screws. They really grab, pull it in nicely. It's because they have a, uh, a deeper pitch. The heck? Uh, I dropped that. Could you pass that to me? You dropped this. Yeah. You want it? Yeah. Thanks. That's in there nice and tight now. Cable, baby. Here we are on the inside. I removed most of the scaffolding from above. I'm leaving these beams in place for now. I wanted to actually have a structure up there in storage or a bed. We've got a lot of doubles where it doesn't mean that could be a waste of money in an actual house but when you're building your own structure you save so much in cost that you can afford to have a few extra two by fours which makes the entire structure so much more solid. I had to have it cut down to sheets that are two feet by eight feet as opposed to an entire sheet that's four feet by eight feet just so that it's easier to walk it in. I walked in every single piece of lumber in this structure. Every single piece was brought in by me on foot. That's a lot of work. Gables are done. It's time to finish off this front wall. So why am I putting Tyvek on the roof? Well, I had a choice to make and I knew that it wasn't going to be raining much for the next several months and I needed something to cover the OSB that is not only breathable but also acts as a moisture barrier, protecting the OSB from the snow as it melts when the sun hits it. I knew that if I could just get through the winter, then when the spring rolls around, I would put something more permanent on it, either a metal roof or possibly shingles that I will use from any of the pine and spruce that I am cutting down, debarking, and letting season throughout the winter and the following spring. This ladder is 12 feet. It's nailed into the rafter ends. So it's sturdy. So I can get on this ladder, no problem. But it stays right here. I don't move this ladder.
I believe that Tyvecking this roof, power stapling, and applying tuck tape to the entire surface is probably the most exciting part of this entire build up to this point. I also believe in unicorns, that pigs can fly, and with enough humidity in the air that it actually can rain cats and dogs. Well, it's not the prettiest looking work, but it should keep the moisture out for the entire winter. So I'm hoping.
So for this last section, which is just this remaining sliver piece here around the door threshold area, I'm just gonna use whatever remaining scraps of OSB that I have. And that way I don't waste anything and I don't buy anything that I don't need. So I'm gonna be just measuring it, putting it in place and marking it. Nice straight line. nail it in from this side and then on this side I can go straight through. There's a bit too much of a gap between the pieces of OSB and I just like to put blocking in between for those large gaps. The tight seams are fine. I knew there was one hidden in there. And two.
It's time to create the door, the final piece to enclosing this. I got a rough opening of 38 inches, um, so I'm going to make a 36 inch wide door by 80 inches. And there is a slight discrepancy. The bottom is 38 inches for the rough opening, but the top is 38 inches and 1 16th. And that's not bad for somebody who's not a regular framer. So I will have to, of course, use shims to bring it to plumb. The other consideration is what I might do, because this door is going to be quite heavy, uh, I might use gate hinges and hang it from the inside so that it is not going to have a hinge cutout on, actually the hinge will be on this side here. Um, yeah, I feel more comfortable because I've used, I've made a door before, very heavy doors with gate hinges and they hold up really well over the years. I've had ones that have a clearance of almost nothing. I made one uh, for a studio, soundproof, so it had to be very tight tolerances. And uh, four years later, that tolerance was still the exact, it was floating off the floor, like barely, and this was a heavy freaking door. <clears throat> heavy, like over 100 pounds. So um, uh, I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this door. Thanks for joining me on this incredible and frequently unknown journey as I build the cabin of my dreams on my very own private and secluded 40 acres in the beautiful Northern Canadian wilderness. As always, if you enjoy this content, please hit the like button and consider subscribing so that you can be notified when any new videos are released. Until then, the future is unknown and I'll see you there.